goodbye to the fam, y'all. I'm sad. And I wish you all the best. I'm going to cry when I'm alone. Oh, Lord. Jerry, Come where you at? Oh. Are you going to be sad? I wish you all the best. Are you going to be sad? Yeah. No, he's not. <laughs> Guys, I just had to update you. This is about one of the most craziest things I've done just to fly out. So I'm on standby. I've missed three flights already because they're awful. I got a rental. I'm about to drive to Dallas. That's what we're doing. We're driving to Dallas. Because I can't miss this flight. So here we go. Four hours, I'll be there. And then my flight leaves like two hours after that so it gives me enough time to drop the rental and um check in and everything because my big luggages are already in dulles so <laughs> this is absolutely crazy i have to say this is crazy but we're doing it so road trip again <laughs> hi family <laughs> life has been life you know it definitely has been a roller coaster this year um, already and before I really get into this vlog and um, this video in general and everything that's been happening I just want to thank uh, my sponsor better help for supporting this channel so before we get into anything I really just want to explain the whole um, idea of using better health and um, how it really has helped me so like I said it's already been a roller coaster and, um, and I feel like I definitely needed to talk to someone and I've kind of just been in this funk and I was like I need to get out of it and like I was like I really need to talk to someone and that's really why I have not been posting I know I said in my last video I was like oh I'm gonna post more but yeah that didn't happen so you know I realized that you know even though there's a lot of clinical uh, mental health issues out there like depression and anxiety and a lot of people are you know going through those things so far as you are just a human being in this world <laughs> and going through everyday life man like we all need someone to talk to Therapy, I think, is a good tool to approach life in so many different ways once you know once you talk to the right person. So yes, I'm in therapy and I'm proud of it. <laughs> and I'm definitely encouraging all my Ghanaian viewers, please talk to someone. We cannot be doing what our parents do and not talking to anybody. Like we actually really need to talk to someone. So let's change the approach by talking to someone. So if you use better health, um, which I definitely recommend you guys to use it because I am currently using it myself. BetterHelp is definitely easy to start. It's just three simple steps. First, you're just gonna fill out a questionnaire. Then they're gonna match you to a licensed therapist. And then you can go ahead and schedule. And you can download the app and do everything there. So I talk to my therapist um, via text, video, and it's very, very simple for you guys um, to use. So make sure that you check that out. Make sure that you use my link, my personal link, and you'll get 10% off uh, the first month uh, for your session. So please guys, utilize this tool. It's there and you can use it anywhere in the world. And that's what I really, really um, like about it because I know that my followers are like pretty much everywhere, um, not just only in the US. So like, please utilize it. So with that being said, let's jump back into uh, my trip heading back to Ghana and this roller coaster of a, a journey that um, I've embarked on or, and everything that's just been happening right now. tired I made it to Dulles I dropped off the car and now I don't have to go through TSA before I get to my date my gate fingers crossed I, I get on this flight too oh, what a struggle never again we made it y'all and I got a seat I have to tell y'all the story when I get there break down this whole craziness trying to get on this flight to Ghana. This is probably the worst experience I've had. I don't know. I've had a lot, but yeah, we about to board um, in a few and I'm sitting all the way in the back. So at least it's a direct flight to Ghana. So in 10 hours, we'll be there. Later, y'all. Okay, okay, let's take a step back. So you guys are probably watching uh, the beginning of this vlog and like, 
what is going on, like what is happening. So let me just explain to you guys. I tried to explain this on Instagram and my service was so bad, like it did not post it. So here's the official explanation as to what happened coming back. So my stepdad works for United Airlines. So he gets, um, you know, the buddy pass and stuff. So with the buddy pass, you are on standby because you don't pay for a full seat. So basically you are just waiting for someone to either miss their flight or for there just to be extra seats available on the flight so that you can get on. So I've already been through this in the past, coming back to Ghana multiple times. Um, even when I was younger in high school, I used to use it a lot and I know how crazy it can be, but I have not used it in a long time and I was like, hey, let's just try it. Let's just, you know, let's just try this. And I'm like, man, why did I do this to myself? But hey, it's a cheaper ticket to get, you know, to get home. And I was thinking that, you know, it's summer, it shouldn't be too crazy like December. Like I would definitely not use it during the December time. But I realized that in the summer, a lot of people are off, um, you know, kids are out of school. So a lot of parents bring their kids back home to Ghana during the summer. So of course it was busy, but I was like, let's start early. So he booked me for a 6 a.m. flight, um, leaving out of Newark. So he's supposed to go to Newark to Dulles, um, which is DC and then DC to Ghana. So get there already, first flight missed. Partly my fault and partly I knew I was gonna get on either because I kept monitoring the standby list and then realized it was long. So when I got there, my bags were pretty heavy so I had to take some stuff out, that kind of delayed me. TSA was a hot mess, like Newark crazy. Um, I would suggest to get there three hours before your flight because it's really crazy, the TSA line was crazy. Finally get there, like ran to the gate and like literally just missed it when they closed the gate. Um, but then when I looked at the list, I saw that it was full anyway, so I wasn't even gonna get on that flight. So I'm like, hey, no worries. There's about maybe four more flights after that. So I'm like, cool. Next flight was not to 10 o'clock. So now I'm there for like four hours now. So I'm like, we'll just get something to eat, chillax, whatever. Um, so I get, you know, it's time to board. You have to wait till everyone boards before they check to see if there's any availability. So they, everyone board and it looks like, oh, we about to get a seat. Come to find out there was like four flight attendants that, um, were, they were looking for to get on that flight because they needed to go somewhere else to work. So they ended up showing up. So all the seats was filled. So I'm like, man, I'm out of luck now. So now I start thinking I got, got to start coming up with plan B if this doesn't work out. Next flight is in like an hour and a half. So I'm looking, it's time. I'm like, oh, I'm looking at how many people are on that list. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't look like I'm gonna make it. And I even decided to switch airports, decided to fly to DCA and then um, have a friend pick me up there and just take me straight to Dallas. DCA was not working either. At this point, it's 12 o'clock. My flight leaving to Ghana leaves at 6.45 from Dallas, right? Then I'm looking and I'm like, okay, the next flight available to go to Dallas is leaving around four something. And I'm supposed to I automatically get posted to that flight, right? Um, but there was supposed to be a flight in between, like around two, they canceled that flight for no reason. Nobody knows why. So I'm like, okay, I'm out of luck. So my last flight is that four something. I looked at the time and I'm like, you know what? It's either I'm going to take a train, a bus, or I'm going to drive. And I was like, you know what, let me drive. So I check to see, I go online, I check to see, you know, what's available um, for renting cars and how much it would be to pick up the car from Newark Airport and drop it off in Dallas. I check and I'm like, okay, it's not too bad. I can do it. I definitely booked that, booked that trip, went downstairs, got my rental, and I drove four hours to Dallas, like, to catch that Flight. And as soon as I got there, drop the car, get a shuttle, go to um, inside the airport, TSA was like this quick, um, go through, then you have to take like another uh, shuttle to get to the terminal that we're going to. I get there, on my way there, my stepdad calls me and says like, hey, um, they canceled your reservation. I'm like, they, they did what? Yes, they canceled my whole reservation and I'm, I'm assuming they did that because they realized I never got on the flight from Newark. Mind you, all my luggage is already in DC. So I was like, that was even what even prompted me to go to DC because I'm like, it makes sense. If my bags are already there, let me try to get there and then just get on the main flight that I need to get on. So I rush to get to the uh, to, uh, to the gate and I tell the guy, I'm like, my reservation is canceled. Why would they do that? He's like, I don't know. Like, just tell the person who booked it to rebook it. So my stepdad rebooks the <laughs> rebooks the flight. 
and he's looking and he's like, I think you're gonna get on, I think you're gonna get on. Can you imagine driving four hours after all that stress? First of all, I was like halfway sleeping because I was so tired because I've been at the airport since 5 a.m., had no sleep, drive all the way there to get there and then they tell me that I'm not gonna get on the flight. Oh my God, I would've lost my mind. But I get there, the guy sees my name now after, you know, rebooking. He's like, okay, you're gonna get a seat, you're gonna get a seat. I'm like, I'm just praying. I'm like, God, please give me a seat, give me a seat. So finally, after waiting for like 10, 15 minutes, the guy, they started boarding and then there was definitely seats available and he got me a seat and that's how I got on the flight to get to Ghana. It was so stressful. And even more stressful when I get when I landed in Ghana and just stood there for an hour and my bags weren't coming. I was like, did these people leave my bag in DC? But it eventually came though. <laughs> but that's the story behind um, getting to Ghana. Now comment below what's the craziest thing you have done to make a flight. I'm very curious to know what people have gone through to make flights, especially international flights. I mean, local flights, you know, you can get away with, but international flights, what is the craziest thing you have done to make a flight? should take like less than like at least four or three hours to get to the so. To Kumase, and yes. when in Kumase, you must go to a wedding. It's either a wedding or a funeral. You pick one. I don't like funerals, so wedding it is. We got a wedding tomorrow. Twenty nine and the five. 
wondering what did happen to the last ten? I ran away with my life, fast forward, never turn back again. It's kind of funny that the more we pass time, the more we need to set the rewind. And 19 was the year I had to leave you, but now I'm seeing all the signs. Is this really happening? I can't believe it's true. I'm just as surprised as you. Is this really happening? I can't be too sure. But one day I'll be yours again. Something from nothing I sit here looking for an answer Maybe the biggest question was in the last chapter You gave me the soul I have today Without you I never could have moved away
them things, you know? We ain't buying shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday, so it's not really busy here. So, a lot of stores are closed. Heading back home, guys. We're on the VIP bus. Bridge is so happy because she wants to be on the bus so bad, and she wants to watch Kuma with us. And they're actually showing one. So yes, um, we got like four or five hours side cry. So talk to you guys later. Okay, so I know mean, y'all can tell I have fun in Kumasi. Um, it's definitely a vibe. Uh, Ghana weddings are just just lit. I mean, every single one I've been to has always been fun. But um, I got back and I just needed to like take a chill pill, jot down some things that I really want to do while I'm here. Um, spoke with my therapist and you know, kind of just gave me uh, some encouragement and a direction and how to like focus on um, you know my plans and, and what I really want to do and stuff like that. That's kind of really what has uh, taken place. Um, if you guys watch this video now, I'm probably already in week three of being here in Ghana and I'm getting myself into some things that I'm, uh, I hope to share with you guys very soon. But I hope you guys enjoy this vlog. Uh, make sure that you subscribe, like, comment, share. And cheers to consistency for the rest of this year and not being in a funk. <laughs> and if I do feel like I am, Definitely, definitely, definitely um, speak to someone for sure. Um, therapy is good for everyone, guys. Literally, everyone. So, I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.